Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of videos. Today I wanted to go over another interesting uh, game that I had recently that I played in one of my county matches. This was for the under 140 league that I play in at the moment. To give you some ideas for uh, for people who live outside the England, um, so the English Chess Federation they have these separate rating scales. Um, it's a three-digit number as opposed to a four-digit number that you'll probably usually find in e most ELO ratings or you know FIDE ratings and stuff like that. Uh, under 140 is pretty decent grade. I think the average in the UK is about 120. So under 140 is a good standard of club play. Um, I quite like playing in these counter games from time to time. It's always a very competitive match. You're always getting an equal opponent as well. So I think these I particularly enjoy. But my record at the moment hasn't been too good. I've actually had one win and two losses. Although two of my, two of my losses, one of them was in an under 160 match. And another one was in a 140 match. So definitely a very tough occasion to play in. Um, but for the most part, I, I quite enjoyed this game. I'm not sure how we did in the end. I believe we might have probably won. I know a couple of my teammates were uh, had winning positions when I left the venue. But this match in particular, I think this was quite an interesting one. My opponent played some really strange moves. And it's always quite scary when you play up against um, weird variations that immediately create strange imbalances. So um, let's start off the game. Some opponent. So I started off with d4 as white. And uh, you know the usual move you'll see is either knight f6, d5, even e6, even c6 as well. Uh, it's very much playable. But my opponent played uh, a very odd variation, e5. Now to the uninitiated, this is known as the Unglund Gambits. And I've actually seen this variation before. In fact, I used to try and play it a little bit when I was um, when I was a uh, younger player, uh, particularly when I was playing in blitz matches to try and catch my opponent off guard because there are quite a few little traps that black can spring on white if he's not careful. However, in a match like this where the time controls were sort of one one and a half, one one hour and forty five minutes um, for the first thirty five minutes, uh, thirty five moves I should say, plus thirty minutes once you hit the thirty fifth move. Um, I think I had a lot of time to really just think, just remember the lines, um, so I was able to get out of uh, danger quite quickly. So the obvious move here is just to take here. I think in any sort of gambit line when you're playing as white, if your, opponent, uh, if your black opponent plays a gambit, always just accept it. I think that's just a good general rule of thumb. Um, black is always playing from a move behind, so if he's just willing to give up material, I would just say just take it, because um, he's now having to try and gain back a tempo for the lost material. So in this in this scenario, I'm quite happy just to take. He played uh, knight c6, and I think even here, I mean, there are some playable moves. When I used to play this this sort of line here, uh, I mean, I've seen f f4 being played, and I think that's okay. Um, Bishop f4, I think, is fine as well. But I think the move here, knight knight to f3 is definitely the best, I think. It just holds on to the material. Black plays uh, queen to e7. So again, just trying to regain back the material. And this is where the, the trappy line begins. Uh, it's after the move, knight uh, bishop to f4. Uh, so this is the move I played. This is actually perfectly playable. But what's quite interesting here is that I'm just looking at the Lee Chess um, database that they've got on here. Apparently Black has won 63% of his games from here. So it's definitely a very viable option uh, in Blitz, in uh, in any sort of bullet matches that you have. So definitely do look to uh, to try and play this variation. So the trap move here is um, Queen to B4 check. And the point here is there is a fork on both the king and the bishop. Um, so I'll show you what's the uh, the right move here. Well, I'll show you the wrong moves first and then maybe show you then the right moves. So the wrong move uh, queen to d2 doesn't work. So now the black queen can take on b2 and if the queen goes to c3 to try and uh, stop 
this uh, rook from being taken. Uh, he'll fall into a horrible trap, and that's the the move bishop to b4. So now this queen is lost to that skewer. Um, the other move, which I did play actually, was bishop to d2. And after the capture here, if uh, if white is greedy and decides to try and hold on to the material, let's say he plays bishop to c3 to try and stop the capture. It looks looks like everything is safe, but in fact, bishop b4 just wins on the spot. And again, we have a similar idea here. If uh, the queen comes to here to try and hold on to the bishop, bishop just captures, and after queen captures, again, you've got that checkmate line. Um, if the bishop just takes, in fact, you've got a, a really strong line here, just knight captures, and this is just completely lost. There's no way white can hold on to everything. In uh, this position, it's quite interesting, just looking at the lines, black is winning 85% of the time in these lines, and this is just on the lead Lee Chess uh, database uh, and it has been reached quite a few times in this position you're looking at nearly over sort of a hundred uh, 200 games where black has fallen into this trap against uh, well white has fallen into this trap against black so um, so the correct move here the move that I played was uh, knight to c3 and now it starts to look a little bit better for white white is winning in quite a lot of lines here and you can maybe begin to see why that is the case. Uh, White is starting to get a huge developmental lead. He's going to be looking to uh, kick this queen away with tempo. And uh, this rook will also be gaining this file here. And he'll also be looking to gain a nice space advantage in the center with moves like e4 coming up very soon but even then I, I still get myself into a little bit of a mess in this game as you'll find out so the next move my opponent played was knight to b4 and I've never actually seen this line before I know it's quite common in fact it's the most common line in this variation but I just couldn't remember what to do here the point being now that black is threatening to capture on c2 and that will come with the knight fork so quite deadly and of course, if I don't do anything about trying to protect this pawn, um, then what will happen is I will have to capture back with the queen. So I'll just show you an example line. Let's say I just try and do this. This is completely losing for white. You'll see here, I actually have to capture with the queen now, since the king can't even move, uh, since he's nicely smothered. So this is just completely losing. So that doesn't work. So I was having, I was getting quite sort of, I had to think quite a while on this variation. I think I looked at this move for about 20 minutes or so just to, just to try and remember what the move was. Because I knew that this was winning for white, I just couldn't remember what was winning. So I thought about maybe doing rook to b1 again. This is also losing. This just immediately loses there. But I managed to find the correct move in the end and I, I, I just remembered what to play. And that was the um, that was a move uh, knight to d4. One final variation, just very quickly. Uh, I just wanted to show you. I did also think about rook to uh, to c1, but this doesn't work either. Uh, the knight just captures here, and uh, this is threatening the rook. I would have to take back with the knight. And here, black is just up to uh, just up a pawn, really. I think this is playable for white, but um, it's. Uh, Definitely, I wouldn't say a huge advantage for white here. Um, so let's just go back for a moment. So here, as I said, played knight to d to d4, and this is now really, really winning for black. Uh, so this holds on to the pawn. If ideas such as uh, c5 here, trying to kick away this knight from this square, you can now just play rook to b1 and... Um, yeah, after this forced move, um, queen to a3, we do have some excellent moves here. This is now just another tempo gaining move, also threatening to uh, come to c7, delivering a nasty fork. Queen to a5, and now this knight is just going to get lost very soon. Um, a6, ooh, very forcing. 
yeah, this is just horribly lost now. Uh, A4, and you're just going to be up in uh, up a up a whole night here in this variation, just trying to find. Yeah, let's have a look. This is also very strong. Look at this. So even if he captures again, there's this horrible fork, and this, this weak F C C seven. Sorry, C seven square is always a potential threat for white uh, to try and leap into. Um, in this variation, you can see here, and I'm just looking at a couple of games now. Um, this is just horribly lost now for uh, for black. Just capture along here, and uh, it's all over. But uh, even then, my opponent uh, played a3, so this is all very forcing, uh, and I wasn't really too sure what to play here. Just oh, sorry, very quickly, he actually just played c6 first, and the point of that was to try and stop any potential problems along this uh, this knight's move here. But I played rook to b1, queen to a3, and I played the right moves here. I played rook to b3. Try and kick the queen away. The queen went to a5, and I couldn't think what the next move to play here was. Um, I in fact played knight to e4 here, trying to unleash this pin on the knight. The best move though was definitely a3. And the point of this is after the the knight runs away, um, we have loads of little funky frets against white. I wonder if you can spot what the next move would be. So the next move here, um, knights to b5. The point being that we've uncovered this fret. This, uh, this knight cannot be taken because he's obviously defended by the rook. The only move, it's pretty much forced that the only move is uh, queen to d8. And you can throw in this check if you like. Uh, this is quite nasty. So after captures, captures here, yeah, this is pretty horrible. Um, if you want to just kind of come out here, and yeah, this is, I'm just looking at a couple of few games that have been played on the database, but this is, I think, a horrible position for Black. He's got a terribly, terrible space disadvantage. He's got a developmental disadvantage, and it's no wonder that White scores uh, quite favorably in this position. Okay, so just going back then, um, instead of this, in fact actually even e4 is playable here, I think that's quite nice, you can't can't really take here because you just take back this knight and you just get this really nice pawn center, and I think that's an even better variation um, for white. Okay. So I played uh, knights to e4. I, I think this was a mistake in hindsight, really, because the problem with this move is, okay, it allows black to take here, but I didn't really see, I was kind of calculating in my head, oh, I'm going to be winning a queen if he takes this pawn, but in actual fact, he gets a weird imbalance here, as you'll find out in a minute. So after I played this move, definitely the forced move here is um, queen takes on uh, this square. And um, I really didn't like this sort of this idea of capturing the knight here. If I captured this knight, he captures with check. I capture the uh, this here. After he takes, he's just winning a, um, a knight and a pawn, and I think he's doing okay here. And I was also thinking about he's got these potential threats of maybe playing c5 here. Um, I wasn't looking too forward to ideas like that. So I, I didn't really want to play, want to have to play that. So instead uh, of capturing, I I went with knight to f3. He then captured the knight on e4, and I thought, oh great, I'm definitely ahead here. I'm going to be winning the queen. But little did I know. I mean, after he captures here, in fact, if you count the material, um, you can see that black is actually quite even here. Um, so this wasn't a huge advantage for me. Nevertheless, in this variation, weirdly, white is still winning. He's, according to the engine, he's about up one pawn. But I wasn't feeling too comfortable in this position. What One of the big potential problems, I think, is this pawn on e4, uh, sorry, e2, sorry, is uh, trapping in this bishop, which is quite annoying. So I have to waste a turn moving the bishop out of the way, 
getting the pawn out. And I've got these two weak pawns here which become potential targets later on. So it's by no means an easy game for me. Black on the other hand though does have quite a few issues himself. He's got nothing developed. He's got a, uh, a knight that's just in the middle of nowhere over here. And if he ever does take one of these pawns he does get into uh, some potential problems with the queen coming along here as we'll find out in the game. So knight to f6, bishop d4. My idea was just to maybe think about exchanging off on that knight, give him some pawn weaknesses. Since I've got this queen which is just highly mobile I can maybe pick up some of those pawns later in the game. He played the move d5 which I think is a bit of a mistake. Um, I definitely thought he was going to play something like uh, knight to uh, to d5. I sort of said that to him in our analysis afterwards. I think this is quite a safe move. Gets him out of trouble. Maybe ideas of them playing uh, the bishop to uh, to e7 and then followed by castles. I think this is quite a solid position for black to play in. Uh, we played d5, uh, which I still thought was uh, quite a scary move to face. I played e3 to get ready to develop the bishop if I wanted to. And now actually he captures on a2, which is a mistake, um, definitely a mistake. We did think about some other variations, I thought maybe about bishop to f5. Uh, I wonder what how this move pair fares out. just want to have a quick look at the engine. Yeah, so it's coming up with the move that we thought would happen, which is bishop to d3. Looking to maybe exchange off these bishops. And I think even after the capture, uh, I think this is quite nice. White has... Under, uh, under isolated one of his pawns. He's got a nice little centre going. He can look to castle very soon. Uh, and if this pawn ever gets taken, this would be an immediate mistake. Um, after stuff like oh, actually he can go back to uh, to this square. So uh, let's have a look. That might be quite interesting. Let's have a quick look at this. I guess White will just castle away. Uh, that looks safe enough, doesn't it? So he has to waste a couple tempo to move the knight back around. So maybe that, I think that pawn is always quite poisonous to, to really take. Black is not getting fully compensated for it, I think, in this variation. Okay, so he captures here on a2. And after he played this move, I was really happy with my position because I can now trap this knight here with the move c3, which does get played here. So now this knight can't go anywhere. He's actually completely trapped um, once he captures here. He tried his best to try and dig the knight out, but I was happy after uh, queen b3. Now just immediately attacking. He now played a real bad blunder. He played c5 to try and maybe kick this bishop or try and gain back some material. But I just played um, bishop to b5 check. And this is completely hopeless for black now. Um, we'll have a look at some variations now. I did think he might try a move like a bishop to d7 to block. But this is even worse than what was played in the match. Obviously after I capture here, he captures back. So that rook's going to fall. I did actually even think about just capturing this way. But I, miss, I completely missed that move actually. Winning even more in that variation. So that's that's really bad. So what he ended up playing was uh, was king to e7. Again, I was very happy with this. So I just captured on e d5, looking to uh, to maybe just take this knight with a tempo. He captured the bishop. I was very happy with this. I just captured the knight, throwing another check down. He ran back to d8. I then played uh, queen to d5. And after he went to, uh, to e7, in fact, the computer is just shouting out, just play it, just castle here, you're just so far ahead. But I just thought, you know what, I'll just, uh, I'll bank on my, uh, on my material advantage, and I just thought I'll capture an a2. This says it's a mistake on the engine, I think this is fine, personally. I, I think white is doing very well in this position. He's up a whole minor piece. Black is still underdeveloped. He, he's gonna have a real tough time trying to develop. His king is, Stuck in the center, there's a lot of pluses for black, uh, for white in this position. Okay, so the game continued. Um, bishop e6 to try and kick 
uh, this queen away. And I wasn't really too sure what to play here. I was a bit sort of worried about some problems. Um, obviously, there's a few little discovered checks. Uh, well, well, not discovered check, discovered attacks, I should say, on the queen in the moment. Uh, but I played, I thought was what was quite a safe move, queen to b2. In fact, the computer loves uh, queen to a5, maybe looking to check the king along here. Uh, again, these were just some potential moves that I could have played, but I thought I'll stick close to this pawn, stick close to this bishop, make sure nothing is hanging, because there's still some potential threats and potential traps that my opponent could launch on me. He now captured here uh, on c3, captured with the queen, and he played queen, uh, rook to c8. So there were some problems here, obviously, now, because he's looking to, to throw down this check and take this rook. So uh, loads of little trappy stuff here that my opponent threw at me the whole game. I then played queen to b4 with check. And here, black will have, even even then, it's still a losing game after uh, rook king to d8. But um, what my opponent did do here is he played um, king to f6. This is, in fact, uh, completely losing. There is a checkmate in two now for white. I wonder if you can spot what white would play here. So I would play, uh, what happened in the game, I played queen to h4 and he just resigned here. The point being now, the only squares that the king can go to are these two squares. If he goes to g, uh, g6, I just throw an immediate checkmate. And if he goes to king to f5, again, this is a checkmate on d3 with a bishop. So, a really weird game, and I think, just to recap, whenever faced with these uh, strange gambit lines, I think it's important just to just to take your time. In this position, after he played the knight to b4 move, again, I want to reiterate, I spent close to sort of 20-30 minutes on this move, because uh, I just wanted to be sure what the right move would be for... Uh, for for white, it's interesting here. Again, I look at the um, the the Lee Chess database. There are a number of games, close to maybe five hundred blitz games, where black white has lost because he's played the wrong move in this variation. And again, going back just to here, there's there's over two thousand games that have been lost here as uh, as white. Again, because he's been fallen into a lot of trap lines. Now, whilst I can put that down to uh, the fact that a lot of these games are bullet games, or a lot of games are these blitz, so it's very difficult to think, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really important to sort of think very carefully in these variations, as quite often you can uh, easily come under fire, or easily lose quite quickly against these crude gambits. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, and I'll see you guys next time.